So as uh, Megan mentioned, I'm going to talk about um, a class that I teach. It's an upper division developmental cell biology lab course. And my topic is going to be very different from what Steve just presented on. I want to say that I developed this course really in response to last year and the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. And this class really revolves around the idea of skin pigmentation. What is skin pigmentation? Um, how do we get it? Um, I think this topic is obviously still very relevant um, from this past year where we saw the rise of anti-Asian attacks. Um, and we still see um, the murders of black and brown people with Dante Wright and Adam Toledo this year. Um, and so I kind of just I just want to start off also like this is not my topic of expertise in any way, but I really want to create a class um, where students could really connect with what's going on in their society today. And I want to also mention um, I had so much help from Kaylee from the DTEI when I was part of the DLI um, this past summer. So she created this lovely banner um, and helped me with the Canvas site. So in addition to the science, I have, a, I have some goals that go beyond um, what I want them to take away from the content and the lab skills. Um, so by the end of this course, I want students to be able to be proud of their skin color, um, first and foremost. I also want them to really think about how their skin pigmentation is related to them personally, um, as well as be aware and critique social inequities related to skin pigmentation. So the first couple of weeks, we spend some time thinking about um, learning about how skin pigmentation may have evolved in people um, as we used to live in areas where our, the UV rays from the, straw, uh, from the sun were, were really strong. And as we migrated from to regions where um, the UV rays weren't as strong. And so how did our skin pigmentation adapt to these new environments? We also talk about the fact that our skin pigmentation serves a purpose. So melanin is the skin pigment um, and it protects our cells from DNA damage against the sun. And so the darker you are, the more you melanin you produce and the more protective it is against this um, DNA damage that can occur. So it's something very positive to have this amount of you melanin. And then they want the students to, to feel that kind of um, sense of proudness, like this is serving a purpose in my skin. Another thing I try to do is get them to connect personally with the material. And this is work based on Dr. Canning and Herakowitz, where they study the utility value assignments. And what that means is they ask students to um, connect with the content um, to their everyday life. And what they've seen um, in response to that is that will lead to more student motivation, better performance, as well as persistence in STEM. So I kind of wanted to also create that kind of environment in my classroom. And so the first week they're asked to do a reflection and this is quite uncommon in science courses, but much more common in the humanities and social sciences, I would say. Um, for, but the first week I asked them to basically discuss how the topic of skin pigmentation is relevant to their own life. Be sure to explain why this information is relevant to your life and explain how the information applies to you personally by providing, providing examples. And as you can see, um, this is based um, the grading is just based simply on completion. So this is a very stress-free kind of assignment for the students and they're free to write whatever they want. I want to share some examples of what students write about. Um, these are just some excerpts. Um, they, they might talk about, for example, in this first, um, first example, they talk about how um, skin pigmentation is different even among their family members. Some students might go on to talk about the colorism that they feel within their family as well. Um, Another student um, talks about the time they've experienced racism and how um, that occurred when she was a young child and, um, and what that was like. And so these can be deeply personal. Um, and the students know that no one else is reading them other than just the instructors. And so they have this freedom to be able to share these kinds of experiences. Other students talk about it in relation to what's going on in society. So you can see here, the first example talks about, connects it to the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and then the second one, this is pulled from winter quarter um, when the capital tax had just happened. And so this student is talking about how the response that um, the police showed were based on the color, the skin pigmentation of the people who attacked the capital. And so, it gives them this opportunity to talk about societal issues. 
And I should say, I try to, I try to encourage students to also um, relate what we're talking about to society and kind of move beyond just a biological perspective. And one way I try to do that is by sharing this TED talk um, that Kaylee actually found um, and identified this artist because she thought it would be relevant to, to my course. And Angelique Dance is this artist who um, categorize or who takes pictures of people and um, she shows that our skin color is a gradient of all different skin um, pigmentations. And I have the students watch the, I have the students watch her TED talk and also write another reflection on it. Um, this time I, I specifically guide them to talk about um, how skin pigmentation is related to their identity or race or ethnicity or how society perceives them. They also have the option to talk about someone else. If they don't want to talk about um, themselves as the example, they can talk about someone else. And I do this because I want them to really connect um, what we're talking about with greater society, right? And for some students, this is a redundant question because they've already talked about racism and discrimination in their first week um, reflection. But for a lot of students, they don't talk about that. And so this really kind of directs them to talk about how um, our society treats people of skin pigmentation differently. I wanted to share this one excerpt um, from this week four. Um, reflection that a student had and the student writes, even though we are all humans with the same number and color of bones, the melanin production an individual possesses can either place them at an advantage or disadvantage in society, as those whose melanocytes produce more pheomelanin are considered racially superior to those whose melanocytes produce more eumelanin. Because of the racial disparities, which result from the perception that white is good and black is evil, people of darker skin pigmentation are always on the negative receiving end of the basic human rights in society. And I highlight this because this person did, an, did a great job of integrating concepts that we've just learned about related to the biology of skin pigmentation and has been able to integrate it with their thoughts on how society treats people of different pigmentation. I think that lends power to their argument that it's simply a difference in just how much um, pheomelanin versus eumelanin our skin is producing that has these greater ramifications in our society. One of the reasons why I'm asking students to make these connections to society is really based on Paolo Freire's work on critical consciousness, where he, he um, advocated for marginalized people to really learn about and analyze their social conditions so that they are empowered to act, to change social inequities that they face, social injustices that they face. And this also builds on the work of Dr. Watts and Dr. Deemer who, who, who identify the reflection piece to be a critical component of critical consciousness and kind of lays the groundwork for action. And so I try to really emphasize um, not only being aware of these, but also like talking about how these inequities occur. And so we spend some time at the last week. So early on, uh, a big bulk of the second half of the um, class focuses on melanomas. Um, and who gets melanomas and who doesn't. And um, one thing is, is that people of color have, are less likely to get melanoma, but they are more likely to die of melanoma. And one of the, one of the, one of the things that research indicates is because people of color are diagnosed at later stages of melanoma. And so I have the students think about why are people of color diagnosed at later stages stages. And we have a discussion in week 10 about all the different types of barriers people of color face when it comes to receiving equitable health care. And so this is, this is a reflection that they write at the end of the quarter. Lastly, I wanted to share some comments um, about the reflection essays themselves from students. So at the end of the quarter, I just simply asked them, what did you think about these reflection essays? Um, and so I wanted to share that writing the reflection essays made the class feel more personal. It makes it feel more important and easier to learn the material. So this kind of gets back at um, Dr. Kenning and Herakowitz's idea that this increases student motivation when they're able to make these types of personal connections. Um, they also connect it to society and students say that this allowed us to understand the weight that science carries in our society. I think that's greatly important as um, students try to integrate what we are learning in science and how it applies to our society. Other students are unaware and say, I wasn't aware about some of the specifics about the socioeconomic effects and bias and et cetera um, in healthcare. And so it really kind of opens their eyes to these experiences that other people may face. 
And lastly, this is something that comes up a lot is it allows everyone to speak freely. And I was able to provide personal opinions and perspectives, something I don't get to do often in my biology courses. And I kind of just want to end my talk with that kind of emphasis that um, giving them these reflection assignments have provided them a space to be able to share their opinions um, and perspectives about something that they do want to share, right? And so um, it kind of gives, it empowers them to speak up and gives them practice about talking about these kinds of issues.